Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Well, good morning, you cheeky squirrels. Good morning, Christine. Nice, n- nice to wear a jumper today. Man. I, I actually turned back to get the jumper. Yeah. I, uh, I did think I was going to have to call you this morning, Swanny, because mm. uh, last night I realised I had a screw in my tyre. God damn. It's not a euphemism. No. And, uh, a lady, a uh, mum, one of the school mums, rang me. Yeah. And said, JB, I'm not stalking you, yeah. but your tyre looks a little bit flat. Oh. I pulled over and had a look, and there was a screw stuck in it. That's annoying. So I went and pumped it up, but then I come out the school. Has morning. somebody done that to you? Or? No, I would have drove over. The cut, while I was playing golf yesterday, there was a bit of construction going on. Probably drove over a screw. That'll do it. Hey, anyone watch the Baywatch, the uh, Pam thing? We started yet? watching it last yeah. night. Yes. What's it like? The Pam and Tommy it's Docker good. movie we're talking about. It's mainly about. Seth Rogen at the. Uh, Se- Seth yeah, Rogan. Seth Rogen. Yeah, yeah, Seth Rogen. Yeah, Seth Rogen, mainly him early, and Tommy. Tommy's really, yeah, he's aggressive. Yeah. Because he's getting home renovations done. Whoa. First scene, there's a bit of action going on upstairs while Seth Rogen, who's the uh, the carpenter, yeah. he's trying to um, build Tommy's new bed oh. downstairs. Oh. And he's just so listening to what's going on upstairs. Reinforced, so obviously. Rogan plays the guy who nicks the tape. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. Anyway, it looks pretty cool. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Ready to hit the road this summer? It's time to What If It. Visit whatif.com to plan and book your accommodation flights, activities, even car hire. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable. Booking cancellation windows apply. What If. It's Aussie for travel. Check government advisories before booking and travel. I wrote it up and sent it in my opinion. It's time for your sake. What a rousing chorus that is. Mm. The great time for us. Yeah, it's time for your say, and I always like to do your say because it makes me feel better about myself and the things I care about. Judy Nermy is angry still about the delays that Australia Post are, uh, are experiencing. Our Christmas card from Finland took exactly two months to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, she's blown up. Well, yeah, Australia Post on their knees five years ago. I know, and now. Jesus, COVID's been a boom for Maybe it was, uh, maybe COVID was designed by Australia Post and, so. <laughs> and dogs. We should look into that. Dogs yeah. and cats love us being at home. Joan from Dandenong. If anyone can explain this to me, please let me know. Perhaps Scott Morrison should promise some car parks for koalas. That should get some votes. Okay. All right. Can we yes. unpack it? Okay. Yes. So, uh, perhaps Scott Morrison should promise some car parks for koalas. What is this lady smoking? What is it? And also, Joan from Dandenong, Dino will be around for whatever it is that <laughs> you've got in your top drawer. What that, is, was that to do with the car parks around the train stations? Who would in know? In Melbourne? Who would know? Yes. <sighs> Elsie from Seaholm is still mad yeah. about how much and how scarce rats are. The rapid antigen test. Oh, I was going to say, actual, actual rats. Looks like the Powerball jackpot is going to be four pack of rats. Uh-oh. <laughs> got him. Edward from Q. He's upset that Jordan Dugowie... Mm. Didn't really get what he considers mm. his just desserts yes. for the incident that occurred in New York City. Mm-hmm. Will Dugowie ever recover from being whipped by a limp lettuce? <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. A, a wet lettuce. Mm-hmm. Dave from Moe can solve all the football woes. Yeah, okay. Because Dave at the moment that? there's some issues in the AFL about scheduling... Any games with the West Coast Eagles or yeah. Fremantle because... Emperor. That's right. The Emperor over there just won't let anyone in. Well, they should just... The AFL should just consult Dave from Moe. Oh, beautiful. He's got all the answers. Let Mark McGowan and WA form their own league. 16 sides is enough for the rest of Australia. <laughs> got him. I think they probably... They did have their own league for a long time, didn't they? The Waffle. The waffle. I think they're their own country over there, Sonny. Bob from Wakul. Hey, it's way cool. <laughs> cool. Um, he's got a solution for racket abuse at the at the Australian Open okay. because uh, at the moment, if you smash your racket mm. in fury, mm. you get a new racket. Mm. That's a problem for Bob. Bob. 
Solve racket abuse at the tennis. It's simple. Make the culprit play out the rest of the set with the broken racket. It'd never happen again. Well, well, we've done Bob it. makes a fair point because in golf, you can't replace your club. If you crack the shits after a bad shot and wrap it around the local, the nearest eucalyptus tree, mm. that That's club's it. gone. Oh, well, there you yes. go. Maybe Bob's onto something. You guys can't tell me it's not enth- enthralling to see someone smash a racket. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And let's finish off with Heather from Broadmeadows, who's had it with surveys. Mm. I was on the phone to someone. shoots me to tears, surveys. Someone called me um, from Borondara Council to do Mm. a survey, and she said, oh, it's a a few minutes. And I thought, I'll give you a go, because I used to be a telemarketer. Okay. And you get so sick of people hanging up. So I'm like, yes, okay, I'll give you a few minutes. Anyway, six or seven minutes into it, kids are going crazy in the background. I said... Sorry, how long did you say this is going to be? Yeah. And she said, "Oh, it's another fifteen minutes." I said, "I'm so yeah. sorry. I don't have I don't have time." They for seem that. to ring at the most inopportune time as well. This was six thirty. Yeah. Too too ridiculous. Dinner's on. Heather from Broadmeadows is also tired of surveys. I no longer fill in surveys. Nothing is ever done. Questions are never answered. I'm still trying to find out why the Coles supermarket in Broadmeadows has no deli. <laughs> It closed two years ago and no one can tell me why we don't have one. <laughs> oh. Walk it off, Heather. Walk Amazing. it off. Nova. Chrissy Swan, Sam Pang and Jonathan Brown. Chrissy's celebrity stuff. Jennifer Lopez has just dropped a Marry Me Mega Mix on her Instagram. Yes. This is the movie that we've been tearing to shreds all week. Um, I've seen the trailer three times and I groan all the way through every single one because mm. it looks like the worst film that's ever made. Oscar buzz. There is no Oscar buzz. There's a Rotten Tomatoes buzz. Um so she's surprised fan fans by uploading a one minute long mega mix of all the songs <laughs> from the upcoming film with Owen Wilson. I think we've got a grab of it. The music might save this whole thing. Something's got to. <laughs> They just talked about it because we've been scathing about this. Yes. It's going to stink like something on your shoe. You're not saying she's following in the path of Bruce Willis. Yes, yeah. I do. I do say that. And Nicholas Cage. She's a great... I love her movies. I love her in movies. Yes. And I love Owen Wilson. But this is terrible. I always can't... Owen Wilson distracts me with his nose. Mm. Every I, time. I hear that. Yeah. Like, I like him as an actor. Because it looks yeah. like a penis. Yeah. It does, but I keep looking at that nose going, how did that happen? Yeah. Is yeah. that natural or did he have a nose job? He's got an eye. It goes north, west, south. Everywhere. And backwards. Which is what you want in a penis. Yeah. Yep. But maybe not so much a nose. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, just before six o'clock this morning, Brooke Boney was presenting this very story on the great Today Show. Mm. And Carl and Ali Langdon uh, accidentally revealed their true feelings about the upcoming film. Marry me is out. February 10th. Marking it in my diary. Smart ass. We'll hear that music coming from Carl's dressing room later. I do like J-Lo's music. That's, that's. And her film. That's to be sure. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty more still to come. <laughs> it looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> Carl says it looks terrible and Ali Langdon says. It looks bad. It looks bad. <laughs> it looks bad. It looks bad. Wow. It's bad. So I like that, that we're not the only ones. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. It's Chrissy Salmon Brownie on Nova 100. I love David Beckham. Love Posh Spice probably even more, though. The talented one of the uh, the Spice Girls. It's not true. Is that right? Oh, someone's here. Hello, guys. How are you? It's David Beckham. You know what? I love my daughter more than I love my wife. I'm always photographed kissing her on the mouth. <laughs> it's quite strange. It's not weird. It's no, not. It's not. It's it's nice. not. Um, I'm going to test this against the real thing because mm. uh, David Beckham was on the. Uh, <clears throat> he was on a podcast, the River Cafe Table Four podcast yesterday, discussing all things food and drink, Swanee. Lovely. It's, a, it's something we can all relate to. Yes. Um, but he's got a bit of a problem in his household because he loves variety mm. when it comes to food and drink. Of course. Don't we all? Course. However, his wife, Posh, oh, doesn't. I imagine she's very regimented. 
unfortunately, I'm married to someone that has eaten the same thing for the last 25 <laughs> years. Since yeah. since I've met her, Victoria, yeah. she yeah. she only eats you know grilled fish, steamed vegetables. Whoa, grilled fish and steamed vegetables. That was my diet. Three weeks before pre-season started, Swanee. Was it? But you're trying to strip down so you pass the skin fail test. Wow. JB, 25 years. That sounds miserable. My great uncle, Fred, he's 92, and he's too healthy because of that exact diet. Like, he's ready. He wants to go. He's ready ready to leave the earth, but his body's too good. Grilled fish and steamed vegetables. There you go. I wonder if she uh, mixes it up, the fish, because... You know, you couldn't just eat salmon every day, or you couldn't just eat whitefish every My day. My dad pretty much does. Fair dinger. Yeah. Salmon and salad, yep, every single day. Hey, we're not knocking that meal. We're no. We're not knocking that meal. We no. love that meal. That's but a great that's meal. All, if that's all you're eating. So it's, a, it's been a... But it's been frustrating for Bex because he loves to just of get course. out there. And he spoke further a little bit about it, saying that the only time he's actually shared something is when Victoria was pregnant with Harper. <gasps> One of their children. Yes, the one that uh, he kisses on the mouth all the time. Absolutely. <clears throat> and he cooked up a lovely meal and he shared it with her. And that was the only time that she's actually taken it. Uh, she does let herself go from time to time, though. Mm. Uh, she previously revealed she won't eat food cooked in oil, butter or, and sauces. She doesn't eat red meat or dairy. So she's cut out a lot of the uh, Oh, my God, I love all of foods. those things. Uh, you know how she really relaxes, how? kicks the heels up. Her comfort food is a piece of whole grain toast with salt on it. And on her birthday... She celebrates with a cake made from fruit. Hello, darkness, my old Snore! Oh, However, this sounds like very disordered I eating. I know, it's hard, isn't it? Mm. So Bex loves when the family's not at home and mm. he can just fire up the barbie, yeah. get the tongs out, Swanee, and a big, fat, juicy piece of Wagyu steak oh. and a shallot salad and a tomato and a glass a of shallot wine. Salad. A shallot Yum. salad, yum. Yes. So he really likes it when Posh is not home. Sometimes it's nice to have the same thing, though, all the time. I never used to be that way, but recently I have eggs and a fresh tomato every single day. You do? I've noticed that. At some point, whether Religious. it's in the morning or a little bit later, I always have eggs. I have eggs every yeah. day and a fresh tomato, and I eat a lot of apples. The yeah, humble yeah. apple. Say that you got me onto apples, Dino. I wasn't an apple eater at all, you but really I have that every single day. You lived to your three hundred. The amount of apples you ate. Correct. Think about apples. You forget that they're perfect. You no. forget that they are God's miracle, mate. Snack. You know what I ate every day? GMS. When I was playing footy, I thought back and I thought, well, it's something because at the moment I'm all over the shop. But when you're playing footy, you mm. get pretty regimented. Mm. And I used to have problems keeping my weight on. You know, so at night. Can you imagine? Yes. Son of a bitch. Can you imagine that coming out of our mouth? Real world problems. Yeah. I used to have a tub of cottage cheese, some stewed apple and some cinnamon over the top. Oh, boy. That's very low calorie, though. That's what I used to eat when I was 10 years old on Weight Watchers. No, no, no. A high dose of protein going to bed, Swanee, just for going to bed. And I used to eat that over and over and over again. Sounds boring, I know. But uh, that'd be tasty. It'd be I like actually a didn't little mind. pie. It was like a little pie and a little yeah. treat at the end of it. Anyway, Dino, yeah. what, what's your regular meal? Hot chips, baby. Beautiful. But you don't eat them every single day. No, nah, I'd say there's chicken. At least once a day, I always get the I chicken. I reckon I eat Meredith Dairy Goat's cheese at least once a day. Mate. In some form. Whether it's a salad at the end of the night, mm. whether it's in my eggs in the morning, whether it's on toast in the middle of the day. I reckon I have... That, goat's cheese, every single day. Righto. Just like Posh, what do you eat every single day? I'm not sure you can top Posh having the same meal for 25, 25 years. years in a row. Maybe we can. Give us a call, 13 24 10. Kiralee from Pakenham, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? What have you eaten for the last however long? Uh, wheat bix and hot water for breakfast for probably the past six years, seven years. What was that? What was the motivation for that? <laughs> Um, I'm a nurse, so I always up really early. Um, I hate hard wheat bix. I just like them soft, so I just found it was quickest just to pour boiling water over them, mix it all up, quickly eat it and jump in the car. You have milk, <laughs> though, as well, don't you? No, not nah, just hot water and um, wheat bix all kind of mushed up. Oh, like, well. basically what I used to feel, feed my um, elderly nurse and home patients. Tell me there's sugar on it for crying out loud. No, I'm sorry. Really wow, bad. Kiralee. Every day for six years, wheat bits and, and hot water. You're boring. Oof. I can't, I can't say. Can we say it? 
She's not a boring bitch, is she? No. <laughs> Come on. So I think, okay. No, it's a routine. No. No, I think the phrase you meant was basic bitch. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, <laughs> apologies. I make up for it. I make up for it at dinner with some nice wine. So oh, don't yeah. worry. Well, there you go. Right. Six <laughs> bottles of wine from Zonzo Estate for you, Kiralee. Nice, Kiralee. Jules, what do you got for us? Half a grapefruit for breakfast. Oh, come on, Jules. Jules, what's is happened this, to you? Is this a hangover from Weight Watchers? <laughs> no, it's just, I love it. I really do love it. And then I have an espresso with cream, so I balance it out with some fat. How good is cream in coffee? Oh, oh my God, God. I oh love God. it when. It's- Oh, it is the best. I only got onto that because we ran out of milk and we only had cream, mm. and now it's like, oh, my God, I'm so excited that we've run out of milk because I can have a little dash of cream. There's big well, help. it satiates you. A little bit of fat makes you feel so good. Agreed, and it's so tasty. It's delicious. Yeah. Offsets the, the, uh, the offsets the sourness of the grapefruit. Polarising food, grapefruit. I just planted a grapefruit tree. Some people love it. Most people hate it. I don't mind it. <laughs> Good on you, Jill. Good on you, Jill. Good on you, Jill. Brownie, the podcast. It's an unseasonably cool day in Melbourne, mm. but the temperature here has just gone right through the roof because Sam Pang has arrived. Oh, it's a bottler in here. It's a stinker. It is. Now, tell you what, <laughs> I like to lift the va- You know, I love to. Good morning, Swanee. Good morning, or Dino. Yo. Melbourne. But uh, just to take everyone behind the scenes, <laughs> I walked in to the, not the studio, just outside the studio, to see. Jonathan mm. lying on the ground with Brody kind of giving him a manipulation due to some back spasm. Yes, back spasms. I got, I got a, I'm a bit stiff after a game of golf yesterday, Sam. And uh, yeah, unlo- it- unlike you, who used to play out on the wings. Oh, mate, I don't know. But why I, put, you, uh, I put the body through a few battles over uh, the journey. You were very yeah. careful out there, mate. You did your best to preserve. You, you, took, you were very careful out there, mate, to make sure you didn't get oh, any what? trouble. But I'm sorry, generally, you know, I'm He's spazzing gone. right up. Do you I'm, need I'm, medicine? I'm in trouble. Paying, you had an opportunity. Actually, I might have one of those, Swanee. Swanee, Swanee he was Jesus. lying down. He was lying down, Swanee. And remember, the famously, on the flight to New York for the marathon, yeah. I, when he was there, just all cozied up like a baby, mm-hmm. yeah. I said to Swanee, I could go over and smash him right now. Right? <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> we had a full discussion over his that, sleeping body. That's the sort of that's the sort of adult uh, conversations you and I had on that yeah. flight, Swanee. Yeah. And I just had another opportunity when he was lying face down down to come over there and just go bang yeah. right on the chin mm. i'm going to give you some next thing you know i'm tablets. picking you up off the ground yeah, look at our period tablets i'm going to give you period tablets Jeez. because of the spasms and all of that, that you, they Christine. might work beautifully and you have a great set of tits at the end of thank it thank you beautiful <laughs> ever wondered what happens in the studio check out chrissy sam and brownie on instagram welcome to the studio jack charles it's Yo. time for Swanee, one of my favourites. If you haven't heard this uh, segment before, it's where, of course, uh, we play songs to Jack, our child producer, our boy wonder. Yeah. And of course, um, you know, you and I, we're right in this, we're right in the same hitting zone in terms of musical. No, musical references, not necessarily musical tastes. No. It's a fairly good, de- decent overlap on the. Uh, but uh, on there's the a, there's a lot of bangers that I, that you as a young man haven't heard because yes. you just you know you just go out to a club and listen to I don't know mm. Gale. Gale. You listen to Gale or you listen I wouldn't to have the thought. you listen to the Weekend or something like that. You gonna make there's there's bangers out there you've never heard. I don't I'm play so that in the clubs I go to, but yeah. I'm standing up, <laughs> Jackie. Standing I up. stand up too, Peggy. Yeah. He doesn't. Also, he's not like deliberately being contrarian. He's oh, got no, an no, open no. heart here. If Absolutely. He likes the song. And I like like a lot of genres. Yes, I'm open. Well, you used to be a dancer. You yes, exactly. Had, you know, so you have an appreciation of many, many different forms of music. So let's just start as I'll, I've picked out. There's very. It's a very eclectic bunch of songs today. So um, let's just start with this absolute banger. Yes. <laughs> Wonder, Come Charles. on! What about that for a banger? That's... Tune or not a tune? That is a tune. Yes! Yeah. And I think Red Hot 
Red Chili Peppers covered it too. Yes, yes. really well. Yeah, really well. All right, this one here. Uh, now, I, I should mention too that Mount and I have edited these so that, you know, you, you kind of, I can't just play the whole thing, obviously. No, no. So I've just got to give you, I've got to give you some references, some, some a bit of chorus, a bit of verse, and any I, other iconic moments from the song which best represent it. Beautiful, Sam. So, thank you very much. All right, what about this? Swanee. Oh. oh, this is big. My back's fixed. That's, a, <laughs> that's that's Electric Blue by the great blue. Ice, Electric Blue by the great Ice House and the lead singer Ivor Day. Ivor Day, the great tune or not a tune? Well, I've when I've heard that, come on, I've always sung it as Electric Dream, but that's a tune. <laughs> oh. It is a tune. He's um, confusing with the great Electric Dreams by Giorgio Moroder. <laughs> Sonny, you're on fire. Hey, oh. two for two. Yeah, you. no, the second one's. Definitely a tune. All right. Uh, There's okay. a bit in that, too, that I was just gearing up for. I'm going to have to go and listen to it again. Can we play thing- that in full today at the- some point, please, Jackie? Can talk we to the please? Boss. Yeah, Ben's away. Let's just do Let's it. Let's do it. Let's do it next. <laughs> the thing about tune or not a tune is that hopefully you'll listen to some of them, and whether he thinks they're tune or not a tune, you may listen mm. to them yourself today. Yes. All right, here's this one uh, by the great... That's two for two. ...by the great cutting crew. Oh! Oh! I love this song! I've watched over the last fortnight. I forget. Really? Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. It's an absolute tune. Three for three. The beginning of it when when he goes. Oh, just enjoy that bit, okay? Imagine that on the Dolby stereo, the the Akai Dolby at home. Oh, I just that. Blow the, the windows. Blow, like, you blow out your windows. Is it coming from the left speaker or the right speaker? Who knows? <laughs> All right. This is. Uh, <laughs> I reckon. I reckon I've been a bit not safe, but you know they're quite yeah. well known. They've all been sort of in a similar cupboard as well. Similar, all right. similar genre. Yeah. So yeah. right. you've outdone yourself with this selection. Yeah, this one, you know, we've been talking a lot about Rocky Four. Oh. And hey, uh, this one, stay with it. This one here is by the great Rob, the great Robert Tepper. <laughs> and this is, if you can, for us, this is a very seminal song because yeah. you can picture a montage it's with a Rocky. Apollo's just died, and Rocky's in the car going through his life. Adrian said, "What." You can't beat it. Adrian's just said you can't beat it. Oh my god, you're losing me. All right, here we go. Hang in there. It was grim for a little bit there, but then it became a joke. Oh, my gosh. That is a perfect score. All right, do you want one more? Yes. Okay. You are flying, Pete. Come on. Not, not second the, last? Not the next. Yeah, second last. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm right. waiting like a right. tennis game. I'm four for four. Yeah, you look like Novak Djokovic. I'm four for four. four. <laughs> I'm four for four. And the only thing I can say about this, this man is one of the greatest living artists. And uh, this, Raging alcoholic. Is he? Was. This, I like him. That's okay. This song... We have we ha- has been on the playlist when we've been in the gym 
and it has lifted us. <laughs> it has lifted us to Stop. new heights. Please enjoy Billy Joel with Downey East Relax. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Come on, Wade. Have you blown this? Give it a chance. He's not going to. He's not. Well, I'm on the Down East He's not going to like it. Look at his face. Give it a chance. <laughs> like all the locals. This song. Billy Joel, Down Easter Alexa. Mate, tune on. Right. And was in Hangover 3. Was it? I never What's saw Hangover 3. Oh, anyway, no tune on, not a tune. That was like a come down. That's not a tune. <laughs> oh, no. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Ice House, Come Electric on. Blue. We played it in full because it was part of Tune or Not a Tune. I wonder and where Ivor Davies is bit, right now. Bit That'd stiff. Be I thought I would, down. And next, in the next hour, we're going to play the entire version of Billy Joel's Down <laughs> Easter. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be great. Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. Call now, 13 24 10, because we're about to talk about Wordle, which yes. everyone's wigging out about. But no, none of us know what it I is. I see it everywhere, but it's missed. Everyone in this studio and out of the studio, if you can explain what the hell it is, we want to hear from you. Thirteen twenty four ten. Uh, Jackie, are we going to? Are we waiting for a call now? So yeah, my mum posts about this. Just you'll have a new fa- Facebook status update with a Wordle score. No one cares, mum. I love you very much, mum, but no one cares about your Wordle score. Well, I think people that know about Wordle do care about the Wordle s- score. From what I can gather, you might have seen it around. There's sort of grey and green. Squares and mm. it's a word game. Now, Sudoku is my idea of hell. Mm. The only Sudoku I like is Jason from Ted Lasso. Right on. <laughs> Sudoku, yeah. See what Close I did enough. there? Close <laughs> enough. Um, <laughs> um, but I do not understand Wordle, but it seems like the sort of thing I would like because I got deeply into Words with Friends, which is online Scrabble where you'd play like Annie from uh, Minnesota. Uh, who you've, you've never met and are never going to meet, but you would play Scrabble with these people, and um, that was great. Word with words with friends. I remember words with friends. Do you remember Alec Baldwin getting in trouble on a flight because he wouldn't he stopped playing words with friends? Yes, I do remember that. He's like, can you please stop playing? He's now I can't stop playing. God, I bet you he wishes for that level of um of of mayhem. Now, yeah, we, now. we want this caller to explain it like we're children. Yes. Right? Like, yes. I mean, I'm lost. I'm Have you seen lost. it at all? No. The, okay, all right. It's a it's a incredibly popular word game. That's all I know. On your phone, I'm assuming. On your phone. Georgie from Mulgrave. Georgie. Hi. Good morning to you all. Explain it to us as if we're aliens that have just arrived right. from another planet. Excellent. That's it. Okay. Remember the nine-letter word that you used to have to figure out in the newspaper? Yes. Nothing like it. So you've got Alrighty. five, it's a five-letter word and you've got no hint, but you've got six opportunities to solve what the five-letter word for the day is. So you put in any random five-letter word that you want to begin with, like think, for example. So you put in T-H-I-N-K, and then the computer tells you what you've got incorrect in those letter choices. Oh, yeah. So if you've got a letter correct and it's in the correct spot already, it'll highlight in green. If it's correct but it's in the wrong spot, they'll highlight in yellow. Boring. And if it's Hello. completely incorrect, they'll highlight in green. I love it. It's basically mastermind. Oh, yeah. It's like hangman almost because then mm. you can't know which letters you can't use again. And you have to try and problem solve what the five letter word is. Is it really happens. is it really addictive, Georgie? Really addictive. I right. now do my kids in the classroom as uh, our start to the day and oh. they love it. Okay. So yeah. for instance, if it was a four letter mm. word, right? If the four letter word yep. was pots, right? Mm. And I yep. guessed I don't know, just looking at say you, Dino, like yeah. I guessed the word putts, <laughs> right? <laughs> the P real the good, P real good level of humor. <laughs> the P and the T would be highlighted in green. Green. Right. Yeah. Ah. So, the U would be in grey because that's not right. That's and, correct. And yeah. this, well, I think putz, it's a Z, putz. Putz is, putz is spelled Z, as we all know. Yeah. yeah. So that wouldn't be in grey as well. That would be in grey as well. Georgie, thank you for that <laughs> very uh, clear that's explanation. Good. That was really good. That was really so good, Georgie. Is, what honest. platforms is, is this on? Is it Facebook? Is it social it is media? Actually, it's a website, Brownie. So you just put in... Wordle with word L E, so W O R D L E, 
just Google that and the first one obviously that'll come up will be that website and it's wordle.uk or something. And it's just one word a day. Boring. Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Fridays, normally we uh, play the Spanish flea theme for this guy, but Dave O'Neill's got his own flash <laughs> intro. Enjoy. He does geeks every day. It's Dave O'Neill. Yes. Oh, Alice to seal. Oh, you would love that. Love the go go. Go go. Linda Carlisle. I still prefer the murder she wrote theme. Mm. No, anyway, that whatever. is better. How are you, mate? Hello, Dave. I'm good. Really good. Really. Getting back into the year. The kids are back at school. All that stuff. You feeling happy about that? Yeah, it's so ra- I heard you talk about it the other day. So rap that they're gone. Yeah. Do you ever feel weird that because um, that really happened on the schoolyard? That mother said, "Oh, did you miss them all today?" And I was so shocked to hear that sentence because there was not one part of me that I missed the, them being at home. When my first son started prep, I was crying because he came back. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thought he was gone forever. Hey, listen, you've been doing the gig. Sorry, Danny, you've been I doing. Like that. You're getting back into it, getting ready for the comedy festival show, which is called Best Hair in the Business. That's Eddie, right. You do have the best hair. Can in I just say it was the best show I attended last year. Really? I, I, I only attended one show, but yeah, right. it was magnificent. Just a late it's night, a, Dave O'Neill. Where, where was it? It was at the, uh, the European the Beer place. Cafe. The the place place place. It was unbelievable. And and also, <laughs> but you've been you've been warming up. We're just getting back into it. For instance, by doing. Gigs in the beer garden of a Mexican restaurant in Geelong. Yeah, yeah, I've heard Bobby Dre's. That was great. I did two shows there, two and six on really? a Sunday. Back to back. And the, the highlight of that was that the C- talk about celebrities, the CEO of Avalon Airport was there. Whoa! <laughs> And so that you are. Great. That's officially right. hot you target him because you love, I love yeah. your interaction I did, I with the crowd. I did target him. Yes. I said, well, how many planes you got coming through there? Oh, two or three. Anyway, so anyway, whatever. And during the gig of plane fly, when I said, I paused and went, mate, do you have to go? Do you have to work on? Uh, bang. <laughs> He's never off. He's never or off. Or on. You get That's free the burritos. <laughs> oh, man, the food there was fantastic at Bobby Dre's. Oh, yeah. We, we went back the next week. We loved it so much. It was really good. The woman goes, you're back. You're doing another show. I'm going, I'm here for the nachos. I'm doing another show. <laughs> so, Dave, the comedy festival is gearing up. You must yeah. be excited. This is like your footy I'm ex- season. I'm, ex- I'm excited about that. You yeah, are yeah. playing um, the European Beer, Beer Cafe again, a fantastic venue, and you can get your tickets at comedyfestival.com.au. So I'm looking for any stories or any jokes because, you know, there's been a lack of, actually, apart from beer garden gigs. So um, my brother told me a good story. He he uh, he lives in Surrey Hills, not far from you, Brownie. Mm. And uh, he uh, there was a knock on his door on Sunday morning about nine a.m. And so his son got up, who's like a teenager, and there was this woman looking very agitated. Mm. And she goes, "Listen, you've got a net over your fruit tree in the front yard." And he's like, "Yeah." The kid's like, "Yeah." And she goes, "Well, there's a bat caught in it." And so he goes out and has a look, and there's a bat asleep under the net. Oh, yeah. 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 So obviously the it's like a kid breaking into a 7-Eleven. He's just, <laughs> he's gone in. He's had a feed. He's gone in. <laughs> he's just gone, well, he's in a food coma. I can't, I can't get back out, so I'll just stay here. And so the woman grabbed the net and the bat and drove off in a car. <laughs> Whoa. What? That's Kick weird. Out the bat. <laughs> a bat napping. Yeah, it was a bat napping. So who did? I, we need a spokesperson. Of course, I've got him right here. <laughs> it's Wooey the bat. Yay! Hey, Hollywood. Dear listeners, um, he's actually hey, he actually he's actually brought in the bat. The he's bat got puppet. The bat puppet. Hey, you know, hey. you know. Oh yeah, yeah. People care about Cleo the baby getting kidnapped. No one gives a shit about Steve the bat and sorry else. <laughs> Like Cleo was found, all right. It's yeah, all exactly. It's yeah. So was Steve. Steve, well, we don't know. We don't know. Anyway, Wooey's here, everyone. So I just want to clarify too, because yeah. I'm not often here for Wooey the Bat. No, you're not. Mm. But um, yeah, you look familiar. Whenever, you, whenever you say, whenever you, Wooey starts with "Hey Hollywood," Hey that, Hollywood, that's a reference to Jack Charles, who yeah. we kind of used to call Hollywood Jack. But it's like it's very, very obscure. Which he actually said in his comedy yeah. show last year when Wooey the Bat came out. Wooey came out to but a what about crowd. The other- he said, "Hey Hollywood," and hey, Hollywood. obviously about four people laughed. They were all who were four, four people out of fourteen. <laughs> well, yes. <yeah. laughs> Well, they're all confused because they think, like, this guy's having a breakdown, obviously. Yeah. That's what's going wow. on here. It's like a comfort dog. Hey. Anyway, we should ask Wu how, how's it going, Wu? Hey, yeah, Wu. I'm a bit sad. Oh, Why? no. What? Oh. My hero Meatloaf died. Oh, no. Oh. But apparently he was in anti vaxxer. Yeah, it wasn't so much a bat out of hell, but a bat out of Wu that killed him. <laughs> Stop it off. How's he still alive in here? Oh, the Osborne's still living. <laughs> Not fair. He should be dead. He killed my Uncle Gary. 
He doesn't like Ozzy Osbourne because he eats bats on stage. Yes. Oh, yeah. no, 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 yeah. no, you do have to explain him. And that's <laughs> anyway, stay positive. Mate. <laughs> Can you oh, stop it? I've hurt me back. I've hurt me my back this morning. Oh, I can't seriously, laugh. Seriously, mate, what happened to you? You were oh one of the God. greats. One of the greats. You were. I'm inspired by Ozzy Ostrich. Are, are um, you wrapped that COVID just continues on and on because we're with the bats. You can stay. Yeah, oh, no, man. Stay yeah, as part he's, of your show. he's wrapped. He's wrapped. Absolutely. Dave's here. <laughs> and for every Thursday Son for the foreseeable for <laughs> for future. I got the cousin of Delta. You want that? <laughs> Don't move! Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Through there in the studios, our friend yes, Dave there it is. Yes, yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And what you might not know about people in radio is that there's a thing called an air check, which is like a performance review, which, you know, traditionally happens after every show where your boss goes through and listens to all the all the bad bits of your show and tells you how you can do it better. And they are excruciating, like any performance review. An air check, and it's done by the PD. Uh, we are joined by an FM radio. Hey guys, uh, yeah, Brad, Brad here, Brad the PD, just back from uh, Hobart, <clears throat> getting those guys at Ho FM in shape <clears throat> down there. And uh, of course, uh, I used to work at Ho FM, did the grave guy, the graveyard, uh, whole, whole hour of noise works every night. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, guys, uh, I'm I'm in charge of your station, Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide, uh, Perth. Mark McGowan's running that now. I don't know what's going on. There. <laughs> I can't get in the fortress. But anyway, I just want to uh, I want to primarily talk to you today, Sam. Oh, because, really? Uh, yeah. Look, oh. mate, I was listening to the uh, the uh, the show the other day, tro- tropical stuff on Monday. Yeah. And uh, we got to. What we'll do, we'll just play a few grabs and then we'll review. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, 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 that's what yeah. normally happens. Okay, this is a, this is a, let's have a list of Sam's tropical stuff here. Yeah. Rafa Nadal defeated Medvedev last night. Ash Barty, she won on Saturday night. And apparently a, quitty, a pretty quiet celebration. Hey, what is that? I mean, you know, it's, inform- wanna, it's information. If I want to hear someone read the Herald Sun, I'd listen to uh, <laughs> Radio for the Blind. I mean, it's good that you're doing a service. For the the, the the visually impaired, but uh, seriously, is that RPH or what are you? Mate, got, what are you doing? Ask Gardner for that. Yeah, exactly, mate. Well, you know, she, she's attractive. That's what we want, mate. We don't want you <laughs> reading the Herald Sun. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's 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 just move on. Oh, is it, are they yeah. all me? Yeah, mate. It's, it's yeah, a review you're the of focus. You. It's a review. <laughs> of you. Nagoya has agreed to anger management counselling after that New York altercation. He'll. Oh, yeah. uh, he pleaded guilty to harassment harassment over an incident at the New York mm. Light nightclub. And he will require to attend 10 therapy sessions. Good. So that, that'll fix that. Thanks. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, hard hitting well, editorial. I don't get it. That'll fix it. What does that mean? <laughs> like, you know, I think you should do a regular segment called Dagoey's Woeys because, <laughs> and because he obviously is going to have problems, yeah. ongoing problems. Yeah. Dagoey's um, Woeys. Dagoey's Woeys, mate. Sam oh Pang's Dagoey's Woeys. Jonathan's in That's pain. Fine, mate. <laughs> but well, you know what? You know what? You know what? Though? What I brought in is this uh, little sound machine that the kids got, right? <laughs> yeah. So this can help you for most of your segments. A bit of a John Blackman from uh, Hey Hey. Yeah. So you could just like, you know, you know, you just play these things. So if we just play, <laughs> I'll just show you. If we just play the end of that grab again sure. with the so-called punchline, and you, you know. That'll fix that. <laughs> now, You're so up, that just you... that just adds a bit of colour movement to your breaks. Yeah, you know? as opposed to having Dino do it. Yeah, yeah, you do, you do it. You're, you're like you like Murray or John Black. I don't know. Hey, hey, mate, I love that show. Murray, I, love I should bring that back. Murray Trigoni. Murray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, have yeah. It again. You, I mean, if you're hey, if this is hey, hey, you're red. Yeah, you're the sarcastic kind of one. Uh, <laughs> I'll crank it real loud this time. Could we just have it again? So here's the end of it. That'll fix that. Just so the listeners okay. know, you're holding a, they're holding a little red sound machine with lots of buttons on mate. it that have different sounds. Yeah, oh, mate, it's incredible here. Oh, now you need more of that. Seriously. Fart gag. Who can go buy a fart gag? <laughs> I right. suggest you go back and watch some tapes of Hey Ho hey Saturday All right. in the prime. Not the yeah. rerun. I love that you've been compared to Red Simons. <laughs> you are the, like the Red Simons. Reds are, reds are well, you're like Russell Goodwood. You're the relatable you know, one. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's Jackie McDonald. Jackie McDonald and uh, <laughs> Folks old buddy. are dumb. Where I come from. Oh, bloody uh, Aussie ostrich on the buttons over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, next, next, next. Well, actually, this one, uh, let's have a listen. This is when Brownie overtook your segment, thank God. And uh, <laughs> let's have a listen to his story. I remember why you wanted me to have anger management. <laughs> Really? <laughs> early, yeah. early days? Early days. Myself and Jamie Sharman, an old teammate of mine, who was also a red light in his younger days, would whack a few bucks. Um, and Lee rang up one day and said, yeah, what you going into anger management? <laughs> yeah, and what did you say? What was your response? Did you just smash the phone down? No, no. He left, he left a voice. I was at the races with Jamie Sharman, and I saw Lee's number come through. 
Like, and I'll put it to her in the cake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to pick up that and it's Lee on the phone and hear this. <laughs> yeah, that's when you need. At the end of that one. But you know what, Brownie? That's for you, Sam, not for Brownie. Very harsh. The story involved violence, gambling, toxic masculinity, <laughs> alcohol and respons- irresponsible workplace behaviour. Bloody loved it, mate. <laughs> More of that. Teach this man here on your left, uh, Champagne, how to do that kind of stuff. Because you need to be more personal, Sam. Enough of the Herald Sun, mate. You need to talk about your life. And I asked the producers, for what is Sam into? And they told me uh, Rocky movies, 1970s footballers and, and wrestling dolls. Uh, maybe stick the Herald Sun, mate. I don't know. What <laughs> Bradley Dan. Anyway, you guys are number two. You could be number one. I'm off to Adelaide. <laughs> See, you. See you next week. Oh, Dave, is Dave here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm here. I'm back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Great wow. to see you, Dave. Yeah, yeah, you know, between sure. Willie the Bat and the oh, pre- hey, program, just like, Peter, you're like a man of a thousand voices, aren't you? Really? I am like, I'm like the modern John Blackman. Hey, you know? <laughs> Google best hair in the business to get tickets. Yeah, Melbourne's yeah, yeah, Comedy yeah. Festival. I've sold no tickets because I haven't <laughs> told anyone. <laughs> <laughs> The podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. How are you this morning? You know, uh, I know I, I talked yesterday about uh, yesterday and the day before being sort of the first days back yeah. to school. I've um, I've changed. I'm so happy about a, a, a slight return to normality that I I don't even bitch about making the lunches. I'm up there. I walk down to Coles, got myself a hot chook. The kids have got beautiful coleslaw mm. and hot chook rolls Yum. for lunch. Little bags of cherries and grapes. And coleslaw? Coleslaw. Coleslaw. We coleslaw. Love coleslaw. Coleslaw and chicken is a great roll. What, was, what just happened there? You John. two just saying coleslaw for about hey, five minutes. What? I think he, un, maybe you're just clarifying what I said. The coleslaw. Um, <laughs> I, I love the reward fit that you're going to get, though, this morning. Mm. At the end of that, you know what the reward is? What is it? That you won't see the kids for about six <laughs> hours. You've got an empty house. <laughs> Risk and reward. Good morning, Melbourne. Coleslaw. Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. How very dead. Sometimes people don't know what they're saying and they say things to you that just makes you say... <sighs> How very dare you. How very dare you. It cuts you to the bone. 13, 24, 10. Has this happened to you recently? Generally, it's women that, that call up. I don't know why. Somebody yeah. pointed that out to me on Instagram. Yeah, who was, yeah, someone had a theory. Is that, did you say that? That's well, we, men just, we, don't, we don't pay attention. Yeah, <laughs> we're uh, oblivious to what goes on around us. Mm. That's why we don't uh, recall when we're getting offended. Mm. I okay. Was, I Maybe. wasn't. I wasn't oblivious last week. Mm. Uh, I heard very clearly what was said from your good self, Christine. Oh, okay. From me. Yeah, from I've me. So I've you. got. To, so the first time ever, I'm going to contribute to someone else's segment. That hurts my feelings. I, I, so how very dare you? We did it, like mate. This, you've, you know, yeah, you did it. You did I it. offended you. Not offended. You I'm can't so offend me. Sorry, Listen, Sam. you can't offend someone who doesn't care, <laughs> right? But it's a fair point. But last week, um, I think Sam Groth was. Mentioned as entering the world of politics, he was going down there to the. Yeah, it's been confirmed as well. Been mm. confirmed, and um, Dino had a question for me. As you'll hear, I answered it, and your response uh, was was the definitive. How very it's dare insulting. you! Insulting. Well, oh have God. a listen. Not one politician looks happy. Why the hell would he do this? It's a very good question. It feels as though that even people who go into politics with, you know, dreams and hopes of change are, are crippled by the institution and the compromises they have to make. That was eloquent. Could end up with Surprisingly. It. Did you write that down? Yeah. Or you that could was end the up most with... coherent I've ever heard you speak. <laughs> <laughs> How very day. The last bit's just a genuine clip. The first one is the, the idea that I could say some words, you know, string them together mm. in a coherent sentence and you... In your mind, I, they had to have, they must have been written down. Is is a how very dare you? Oh, Christian? How we're, we're together for six years. What are you, what, listen to it. Listen, the bar? But but it was such great economy of language mm. and wonderful vocabulary. And you and know what? Had an impact no as well stumbling because coherent gets your attention. Have, have coherent. another listen. Here we go. It's very long. Hey, not one politician looks happy. Why the hell would he do this? It's a very good question. 
It feels as though it goes. even people who go into politics with, you know, dreams and hopes of change uh, are crippled by the institution and the compromises they have to make. That was eloquent. Did you write that down? Yours is, yours is a fair little bit of a how very dare you. Am I not traditionally quite el- very eloquent? You know, not why, like that, because that was quite is? serious unlike, and heartfelt. Like many other people involved in this show, I actually think about my words before I say them. <laughs> right? so well, to me, you had done some work in front of the mirror the night before. That's <laughs> what it sounded like. Reeks of it. I'm, uh, I apologise. <laughs> really? I apologise if that offended you. No, it was an eye-opener for me. It was good to know where, where the bar is in terms <laughs> of what you all expect from me. Look, it's pretty low. Uh, it, uh, yeah, it's pretty low. Obviously. For all of us. Obviously. Yeah. That was really impressive. And I even listening to it again, I'm really impressed by oh, well, yeah, I'm just letting the you know. sentiment and the coherency. And, you know, what is it doth defend too much? But I just want to say, when you, you know when you're tr- you know, trying to be funny, I mean, sometimes it's hard as opposed to just, I don't know, just talking like a wall of sound with word after word after <laughs> word and doesn't really mean anything, but you're very, very um, fluent and absolutely uh, it's not what I usually do. So, so then, how very... How- Thirteen twenty four ten. Give us a call. I'm sorry, Sam. Georgina from Brighton. Who insulted you, and what did they say? Good morning. Well, the dental nurse did actually. Um, I went to the dentist, and I just had shorts, t-shirts, and thongs on because I'm working from home. And I'm flat on my back, and you know you've got all the tools sort of coming at you. And the dental nurse said to me, "Are you working from home?" And I nodded, and she said, "Oh, you can tell." And I just thought. <laughs> Okay, I'm about to choke here on whatever you're doing to me. I've got no opportunity to respond. So I thought, how very dare you? That's a good yeah, one. That's a good one. You know, but just, you know, a message to dentists and in general. And great delivery, Georgina. A message to dentists in general. Yeah. I'm sure I don't know if this has been covered. Just stop talk, Stop asking uh, Stop asking questions. Stop, stop talking to me that requires yeah. anything more than a nod or a grunt. Absolutely. What are you doing? What? A ridiculous... It couldn't be more obvious that I can't communicate with you. I love my dentist, though, Leah. Do you? Good man. Yeah. Out there in Thomas. And, Marry him. And I'm trying to watch uh, Bold and the Beautiful on the TV on the ceiling. <laughs> it's always Bold and the Beautiful. So good. It's the magazines, too. It's quality Thank magazines. you, Georgina, from Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> 2012, 12 <laughs> April edition of New Idea. <laughs> Last time. I was someone's in the dentist. I'm not kidding you. You're like, what? Princess Margaret died? <laughs> I reckon this is a magazine that's there and Charles and Diana had just got back got together. It was unbelievable. They were dating. <laughs> it's got Hampton. It's Erica. Hello, Erica. Hi there. How are you guys? Good. Darling, when have you wanted to say how very dare you? Oh, when I was talking to my boss, well, we were having a discussion about weight gain and I was saying, oh, geez, I've got so, put on so much weight. And she said, no, 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 you have not put on weight. You just need to tone up a little bit. <laughs> and then she proceeded to give me one of those massive, giant elastic band things, you know, the things that you put your foot in to yes. try and stretch your stomach out? Yes. For Christmas. For Christmas? Oh. Yes. Yeah. How <laughs> very dare. It's probably a good, like a good caveat if it involves someone else's body. Don't talk about it. No, mm. good, good gift. Old Practical. Team, old team, mate <laughs> of mine. Bought his fiancée a Christmas gift of a gym membership. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. They did, not, oh. they did not make it <laughs> to a wedding day. Really? No, they oh. didn't. Cancelled two weeks before the wedding. <laughs> but she kept the gym membership. <laughs> she did. <laughs> the gym membership lasted longer than the, than the courtship. I All hope right. she started sleeping with her personal trainer that she met at the gym. <laughs> Anna from Garfield. Anna. Hi. When have you wanted to say how very dare you? Well, on Monday morning when I got all my children ready for school and so excited and they were so excited to be going back and I told them I was really proud of them and they turned around to me and said, we'd be really proud if you went and got a job too, Mum. <laughs> how very dare you. Wow, How very dare you. Get rich of the kids. <laughs> that's a yeah. rich. But I did not pack them cold floor and chicken sandwiches, so that might have been the problem. I Sucked think that's up. true. I think tonight at dinner, say, look, I've I've heeded your warning and um, I'm going to be a fly-in, fly-out worker. I start at the mines 7,000 <laughs> kilometres away on Saturday. So what do you think about that, kids? I think they'd actually love that. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. Anna Z from Sunbury Z. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Good. When has someone um, said something to offend you? Uh, yes, I'm actually a hairdresser and I was cutting a client's hair and she randomly just turned around and rubbed and patted my stomach <laughs> and said, how far along are you? 
<laughs> a timeless classic. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not pregnant. <laughs> How <laughs> that was awesome. they day. That's horseplay at worst. Horse isn't it? You can get rid of these. Yeah, get out of that. But exactly what you said, Sam. A timeless classic. It's a bit risky, isn't it? When will Why people will learn? The risk, what is the risk versus reward is just not worth it. It's There's not no worth way. it. Z, what was the first thing that you said when she rubbed your stomach and said how far I along? I said, oh, no, I just had a big lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. And then what did she say? I'm fascinated. <laughs> Tell me the truth, uh, Well, she's an older woman and she's like, I just don't think she comprehended mm. what was going on. Like, she was just like, oh, yes, yeah, all right. Then she bought. Then she bought you a gym membership. She didn't say what Sam suggested. Tell me the truth, Tubby. I'm just, I'm just, just, just the fact that she patted my stomach though was like really yeah, wow. That's yeah. next level. Even if, even if you were. Even if you are pregnant, Swanee, I, I'm under the impression that that's not allowed anyway. I just feel like someone t- has squeezed my boobs <sighs> and said, are they real? That was just one of our crew at the Christmas party. <laughs> Program directors. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Z. Adele. Oh, Adele. I ain't ready. From Brighton. I ain't ready. You ain't I, ready. So I was 12 years old. I hadn't seen my grandmother in a few months because she lived interstate, mm. she went to me and said, Ooh, you used to look five months pregnant. Now you look nine. How very Adele, dare. and you were 12 years old. I was 12. That woman needs to be thrown in jail. Trauma. What a bitch. Who would say that to a 12-year-old child? What is wrong with these people? At a certain age, the old people just start giving zero Fs. Yeah. Under the guise that they're yeah. losing their marbles, but really they've got their marbles. Yeah, it's fair point. Exactly. Dennis Walt. Adele, how old would she have been? How old would she have been at that stage? Not very old, I'm guessing. Oh no, seventy two, maybe. Mate, she's got him. Mate, she is the worst. Is she the worst person who's ever drawn breath? Yeah, look, look, she could be better. I love her, but you know, she comes out with these things sometimes. Oh, that is how very, mm. very Let's dare call you. her. What's her number? Yeah, what's her number? We're going to call her and explain why that's not right to say to a 12-year-old child. Oh, she'll be asleep still. Yeah, that's right. Maybe she's not as bad as I thought. <laughs> she's, you've, been, you've gone hard. It's your grandmother. She gets me. a lead pass. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. How right. about some tropical stuff? Samuel. Sense of the day stuff. SOD. It's, it's pretty quiet, to be honest. But I tell you, can I just start with the big news? Just yeah. I know it's football related, world game related. Yeah. But I did tell you early on that, that um, our former national coach and national treasure, Ange Postacoglu. Yes. Has, has one know, of the great names, by the way. So, amazingly uh, got a job. Not not amazingly because he's not talented enough, just because he's a bit of a trailblazer when it comes to coaches or managers getting jobs over there. He's he's coaching Celtic, one of the biggest clubs yeah. in the world, in the Scottish Premier League, mm. and uh, fighting the good fight up until today where they took on the top of the table, Rangers. The score, Ooh. Celtic 3, that's our team, mm. Rangers 0. Celtic, the table stands at the moment. Celtic, managed by Ange Postacoglu from Australia, is on top of the Scottish Premier League. <laughs> Can you he's believe a, that? He's a freak. Yeah, he's, because he's doing an amazing, amazing job. There. Would that be the biggest? I just want to take my jacket uh, ra- off and throw it around the, the top of Do my it, head. Mate. That's great. Would that be the biggest rivalry in world sport? Oh, it's one of the big ones. Yeah, that, that's a big, big result that's just happened a couple of hours ago. And for him to do that, and by the way, at the start of the year. Celtic were not expected to do much. He was not a very, you know, he was so unknown mm. over there, of course, and he wasn't, you know, there was a lot of... Uh, he's a good man, too. Oh, he's, he's a great a, man. Lovely man when you meet him. Great man. Like him. And, Rod uh, Stewart goes for the Celtics, doesn't he? Does he? They green? Well, he's, yeah, well, that's yeah good. green and white. He's a massive soccer man. Just remember, by the way, that the Celtic fans, they are, I played this earlier in the year, but they <laughs> have embraced Ange Postacoglu to the point where you would have thought getting the name Postacoglu into a song... Is tough, Ooh. but you remember they did it to uh, to the tune of Last Christmas. Yes. That's a fair. I love soccer crowds. Anyway, that, that's yeah. just. I'm just. Yeah. I love that man. So I'm very very happy for him. Novak Djokovic's uh, biographer claims he will now get vaccinated. Just in time, I would have well, thought. What? 
He thinks that it's driven by the fact that, you know, Rafael Nadal won the Australian Open <sighs> and uh, has 21 major championships, mm. major titles, which is amazing, by the yeah. way. Novak's on 20. And the whole story was about Novak looking yeah. to break, you know, but you're going, yeah, N- Nadal did it. He came, he got vaccinated, he did it. And so apparently the. The strive uh, to get to 21 titles is a big driving force. With, uh, with, well, I suppose uh, you've Novak. got to take your wins where you get them. Everyone gets vaccinated for their own personal different reasons. This is his biographer who's chronic- chronicling the journey of the 20-time Grand Slam winner, a lifetime of war. The, uh, Do you think the- anyone else in the world cares as much about that story as we do? Like, do you think it's only b- really big here or...? I think it's big here. Sorry, Brown. I think it's big here now and I think it'll be big, I think, the next... French. In the, in the French Open, it'll be there. Be right. There if That's decides. more of an international stage too, I think. That might well, be just, a problem. Well, it's just, it's just yeah, the next... Yeah. Yeah. And they've brought in the uh, mandate that uh, you have to be vaccinated, the sports people over there. In right. Paris. So okay. it's going to be a problem. But I think it's a big thing because the race between Rafa, Roger... Or Novak, whoever finishes with the most, I don't think he'll ever be beaten. Yeah. So yeah. that would have, and he looks the most likely because he's the youngest and still looks the most healthy. Mm. So Rogers over the hill, Nadal's just hanging on for dear life. <laughs> he is. That was a very good. You should you should commentate tennis. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> and Jim Courier. A lifetime. Push, oh, push Woody out of that box. Mm. A lifetime of war is the name of the book, Swanee. I look forward to the new edition, the chapter on Novak versus the Australian government. That would be a nice little addition <laughs> to that one there. Um, yeah, so that's that. Millions of rapid antigen tests are set to be manufactured in Victoria. Mm-hmm. Dino, you've been making them in your backyard for months anyway. No one will buy them. Mate. <laughs> They're good call. In uh, our Premier announced yesterday. Aussie seller. <laughs> they say on eBay. Aussie seller. Melburnians, could you, I heard this, did you mention this earlier about why are Christmas decorations still up in the city? It's February? No, didn't mention that. You must <laughs> wow, be listening that was to Fev. That was quick. The city might have other things to worry about. What? Getting people in it? Mm. <laughs> hey, the what, city's yeah, back. The, everything's shut Trust me, down. the city's cranking again. Oh, good. Is it? Yeah. it must be the, decor- the decorations are working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. During the day? Yeah, it's cranking. That's it's great news. I'm so happy. It's lovely. You know God, I can't wait for the comedy festival. Oh, it's my time to shine. Yeah, that'll, that'll be a good chance to supercharge the city. Yes. As I look up, by the way, and see, you, we mentioned Carl and Ali. Yeah. On today. Is that another example of Remember they were in the news about maybe sluggish ratings and that was a story. Yeah, what another example of like, if you're an exec, just hold, just stay the course, just yeah. just let it go and then it, it'll pass. Of course and they're just fine, passes. they're up there every morning. Mm, they did a good show promo for the year. They what? tried to re- um, reincarnate... Scene from Pulp Fiction. Reincarnate. Oh, or I didn't recreate. see it. Re- sorry, re- recreate. <laughs> where, uh, where Tread they, very where, carefully. His back is sore and he will punch you in the face. I'll knock you out. Right now. <laughs> the last one I want to play is Ed Sheeran. I don't know if we've heard of him, a young artist. He's got red hair, doesn't he? He's, like been, he's been revealed as the world's most played artist on the radio. <laughs> Surprising no one. Whoops. Wrong. Oh, that that's was Dua Lipa. Was that Dua Lipa? Was, Dua. was she second? Oh. Don't show up. She's great. Don't come out. Don't Gail's third? Yeah, Gail and then, then Dennis Walter. <laughs> Ed boasts 4.3 million plays per year across the globe and, and Dua Lipa uh, 4.2 million. That's pretty tight. That's pretty tight. Mm. What's your favourite uh, Ed Sheeran song, Granny? All of them. <laughs> Mine's don't. <laughs> Mine's don't. <laughs> don't mess with no. 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 Um, All right, who's third? Goes don't. Who's third? Oh. It goes Sheeran. This is the most revi- the most played artist on the radio. Sheeran, Leaper. Has to be an who's American. Third? Has to be an American in there. Drake. George Benson. I don't know who that. Who's oh, no, Kanye. Who's, what's George? No. I will just keep going till you get it. Yeah. The weekend. Whoa. Oh, wow. Really wanted this segment but to I finish, didn't you? It. Yeah, I did. Anyway, well done to the weekend. Three million spins per He's hour, so year, good. whatever. Oh, Who's right. he dating again? Uh, Angelina Ding Jolie? Dong? No. <laughs> That's not Ding Dong. No. I think it's Angelina Jolie. Oh, he's doing well for himself. I'm sad that you don't know George Benson. That would have been really what funny he if you'd known it. So give me the night. So come on out tonight. Good song. And we can be loved. Anyway. He's fourth, sorry. He's fourth. Uh-huh. <laughs>
for sure. We'll be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Oh, unless it's a weekend. Here's the 100.